Hey, what's up guys? I gotta steal Scott for a minute for you. We're gonna talk about some radon here. So, Scott, if you don't mind, buddy. So, we're talking about radon today, and I know on the existing house here, you're better at having those numbers for the radon there, but then that sparked some interest in a friend nearby in conversation and coming to understand their situation over there. And then we'll jump back here and talk about how we're actually gonna deal with radon mitigation for our house. But why don't you start us off and tell us the story about the existing house and your uh, friend. Yeah, so we, uh, when we bought the, ho the house that we took down, there'd been a comment about radon made by uh, actually a prior owner. I hadn't really been that familiar with radon issues. We had a test done in the house we live in now before we bought it, but that was a charcoal test that took, I think, four or five days to get results back, and it was a one-time thing. And so, as I'd started sort of investigating radar detectors and what was a good air quality uh, test, we started with CO2 levels and then moved into finding a radon detector. And that's when I came across air, the Air Things units. Right. And we got a, we, I think we ended up with four of those in the house and we placed them to see, to see what the levels were in different places. And we found that the level was 16, uh, where the level that above four you're supposed to mitigate. Right. And uh, I think the comment was that we, in researching it, a level of four is equivalent to having 200 um, chest x-rays a year or smoking eight cigarettes a day from the standpoint of what it does to your lungs. So that was a little scary. Uh, nobody wanted to go in the basement for after that for a while. That's kind of what we consider the acceptable <laughs> level. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, so, hey, it's okay. Just go smoke your eight cigarettes every day. You yeah. should be fine. Yeah, and that led to having these detectors that once we took the house down, we loaned them out to a couple of neighbors um, in the area. And to my absolute shock, we had levels of spiking to 300 plus and a sustained level of 125. Uh, so a four is eight cigarettes. Yeah. Three hundred is <laughs> you're, you're you're just smoking the tobacco barn. Yeah, exactly. A day, right? One of the key elements also is we're going to continually monitor forever, and we're going to leave these monitors uh, from Air Things on uh, to basically watch it, and it reports on a web uh, on a on a uh, on an app on your phone and so forth, which gives a lot greater comfort level. And I have them them on loan to somebody right now. And I get warnings every time there's a change in their uh, radon levels. And it's a, a, just a, a really good thing because the government says you should, if you don't have a system in place, you should test your house every year. And if you do have a system in place, you should test it every two years. Right, right. which nobody I'm does. guessing probably nobody does. No. But uh, maybe after this, we can turn some heads. Yeah. So let's jump down in the hole. Hey Scott, before we talk about the mock-up, the fan, and our mitigation system, I think it's really important that we reiterate this idea of radon and the fact that, you know, even in your house, we could have a level over in this corner and we can go 60 feet down around the corner and have a totally different level. And I know that's what you guys experienced at your friend's house, right? Right, and we experienced in the old house here too. We had a 16 over in <clears throat> what was this <laughs> about this corner, and it was about a two over in the other area, other part of the house. The, the friend's house, um, we had the very high readings in one area of the house and perfectly normal readings in another area and some other in between. And then you have the seasonality, which was when they had the house open and windows open, the living spaces were pretty much fine, but the downstairs was the problem where you had you know real basement. As soon as the, uh, the weather has gotten bad and the house has been closed up, we had the, they had the additional problem of the fact that it's trans being transmitted through the heating system and the duct work. And so the readings we were getting originally uh, were all, have all changed because as, as they distributed through the house. Now, the first of the systems they did uh, mitigated the, uh, the vast, vast majority of it, but they're gonna have to come back and do a second pass to figure out another location and it's a fairly large right. house. And if you take that concept and scale it up nationally, like we talked, like I talked about earlier is, you know, there's some places on the radon map that it seems like it's non-existent, but that's like your house. It could be non-existent over here, but highly existent over there. So even though you have a, a state like Texas where it shows pretty much non-existent, I've actually had phone calls 
from builders down in Texas that say, hey, Steve, what do you recommend for a radon mitigation system? Because we tested it down here and we actually have a site with some pretty high levels of radon. So I think the moral of the story is, is don't treat radon as, yeah, maybe it exists here. Nah, it really doesn't happen here. I think you have to be in the belief that it can happen anywhere. It can happen in your house and it can happen at different portions of your house. So it's really important to get that tested and get that understanding over time. So we're actually, <clears throat> I, I have great comfort with the, with the way that it's been planned out thanks to you and the April Air folks and, uh, and so forth for this house. But and if I was in, a, in a, if it is an existing house, I would be very worried and wanted to make sure that I at least monitored uh, continuously, right. and especially as the seasons change and you get a different perspective as you uh, as you have the heating system on. I think it's just an important thing to do. We're actually in the town we're moving to. We're actually starting a program where there will be a bunch of monitors at the library for people to borrow right. and be able to test their own house and see how it looks, how the numbers look, and uh, decide if they want to they want to monitor full time.